Jonathan Yerla. Uh, welcome to Pagburu at Pagal sa Natural Depictions and Illustrated Prophecies, Elasha 1910. Uh, so the project is created by Carlo Paolo Pacolor. They are taking the video. Hello! <laughs> And um, the project is here at the third floor of Vargas Museum, and it is made possible with the help of Tinao Art Management. Pagburu at Pagalsa is a historical fiction set in 1910 Luzon that also confronts our current time period. It is a sparse mapping of the journey of the dissidents Hilasio and Mantatio from Tayabas, Quezon to Pamitinan Cave in Montalban, Rizal. Hilasio is the author of the journal the drawings and the texts, and the translator of Mantatillo's oral prophecies into images. It was also Mantatillo who initiated the travel to the cave so that she may divine with the help of Helasho and the people they would meet along their trudges, the many conditions of fermentation and revolution, or Pagburo at Pagalsa. So Helasho and Mantatillo's travels starts here or dito sa Tulay Malagonlong sa Tayabas. Um, kung titingin tayo sa kanan, may corresponding journal entry yung drawing na yun. And uh, nasa linya na mistulang walang dulo ang tulay habang nagsasalita siya. Tapos pinakita ko yun, um, yung detalye na yun dito sa drawing na to by having the edges dissolve into the atmosphere. So importante yung detalye na yun, kaya ko siya minention. Dahil gusto kong sabihin na may influensya ang magic realism ng literature sa project as a whole, hindi lang sa works na to. So ito ay portrait ng isang constabulario. Kung titignan natin yung detalye ng mata at yung um, pulang espasyo dito sa paanan, nagbibigay siya ng, ano, ng ghostly quality sa portrait. At intended yon kasi gusto kong i-highlight yung violence na ginagawa ng uh, supposedly uh, keepers of the law and peace sa civilian sa mga kapwa niya Pilipino um, noon nung panahon ng uh, Amerikano 1910 ang sinusupil ng mga pulis o ng mga constabulario ay yung mga nananatili or yung mga naiiwang resistance movements mga anti-colonial resistance movements at ngayon yung pinapatay ng mga pulis ay yung may hirap mga peasant leaders yung mga tinatawag nila mga rebelde. So gusto kong ipakita na may continuation yung ganong uh, violence na sinimulan ng mga constabulario. At it persists hanggang ngayon. Uh, so ito ay dalawang kopya ng Pasyon Bernardo Carpio. Um, may significance si Bernardo, si Bernardo Carpio sa project na to kasi ginamit ko siyang uh, mythical reference to uh, indicate or and to insert um, an idiom of resistance and eventual freedom. Kung matatandaan nyo sa uh, Pasyon at Revolution ni Ileto, meron siyang chapters doon na sinasabi niya na ginamit nila Bonifacio ang mito ni, Bo, ni Bernardo Carpio uh, para sa pagpapatuloy or bago simulan ng 1896 revolution. So, Sinusubukan kong dalhin yung kaisipan na yun uh, dito sa project na to. Ito ay uh, portrait ni Dean Worcester. So, zoologist siya by practice. And um, he, took it, he, took it, he took it upon himself to dehumanize ang ating mga ancestors sa kanyang anthropological malpractice. Um, so, Worcester was an agent of uh, American expansionist efforts during the 1900s. Um, tinignan niya yung mga indigenous peoples, um, indigenous populations sa Pilipinas as research subjects. And uh, indeed, another signifier ng American supremacy, ng white Adamic, na tinatawag nila noon, or na tinawag ni Risa Balse sa libro niya na Body Parts of Empire. So, yung trabaho, ina-attempt niyang subvert itong malpractice na to ni uh, Dean Worcester by placing him as uh, a research subject. Dinidehumanize ko siya dito sa trabaho na to through the captions. Ayun. So, essentially, he becomes a non-human mass.
So the work is called Altar ng Sakuna at Dusa. Still life siya. Sa gitna may bust ng isang male figure. Sa kanan, may artillery shell. May maliit na bala. Sa kaliwa, lacerated lungs. Patay na bulaklak. Uh, so these items, uh, they consolidate our collective tragedies. Or at least yun yung inattend ko sa kanya. Yung pandemia, perpetual na kamatayan, and militaristic response sa pandemia. Tapos itong mga items na to, uh, nakapatong sila sa skewed na lamesa. Um, with that man- slight manipulation of, of linear perspective, gusto kong um, sirain or gusto kong ipakita na flimsy yung realidad na ginagawa nung uh, mga figures sa taas ng lamesa. Gusto kong ipakita na konting uga, mawawala sila, huhulog sila. Yun. Also, the initial plan for the work ay as is siya, after kung i-drawing siya na itapos na yun. But Carlo pointed out that um, it is too soft, na even beautiful. So, um, we decided to break that aesthetic pleasure or that aspect or the quality of aesthetic pleasure. So, naisip ko na baka pwedeng ibawa namin sa lupa. And after a month of burial, ito siya, ito ang naging itsura niya. Um, Sira, bulok, which I think is also quite apt sa gusto kong mangyari. So, this is a portrait of Van Rappi. Um, kung maaalala niyo yung title sa baba, Hilasha 1910. So, si Hilasha na yung credit. And uh, so, I want the portrait to give due credit to Manta Pio na equal source ng knowledge for the narrative of the exhibition as well as uh, the political food group. Siya ang source ng political awareness. And in fact, siya ang nag-ugyok kay Hilasha na tumulak sa ganitong direksyon ng, uh, um, sa political spectrum, right? So, sa kaliwang kamay ng mga tatiyo, may hawak siyang baso at sa kanan ay meron siyang hawak na basket, woven basket yan. At uh, source siya ng walang patapos sa maagos na bodies. So, bumabalik pa rin yung tema ng magic realism na unang pinakita sa tulay malagundong sa baba. As note nyo lang din yung gawang ng sali sa upper left corner. Yeah, significant siya. Marami yung nakakalap na image siya dito ng buba at ng dahon ng sali at ng sali. Yeah. There is a layer then often insidious violence to the socio-political climate of the early 20th century. Simultaneous American neocolonialism and abuse of labor conditions within the industrial regions of the zone. An equally layered response to these are the persistence of separatist offensives and workers' strikes. Essentially, calls for revolution. UUD, or Union Obrera Democratica Filipina, one of the country's first trade unions, was founded and dissolved while Makarya Sakai, a revolutionary general, was still alive. It is also worth noting that a then prominent labor leader had orchestrated the diplomatic surrender of Sakai. Sakai was executed shortly after. This tether between the seemingly separate ordeals of being a colony and being a factory employee points at the methodical abuse capitalist production renders. Sources for research for the project affirms and reaffirms that colonization is indeed a function of capital. Our fascist regimes accumulating body count of its critics and imagined enemies only further exposes its severe ineptitude and confirms its fearfulness. The targeted killings and persecution and the growing corruption are consistent with the climate of 1910. Pagburo at Pagalsa links this tumultuous time period with the current political ferment through the oral prophecies. These magical revelations underline the continued oppression, the imperial powers, and ultimately, capital, inflict on us. They directly confront the contemporary. Alright, so the work is called Babalik Ang Unang Baba, 
Bala mahabang magdama. Um, this is one of Mantatio's prophecies. It is a condition of ferment. Uh, so yung bagay, it's a neutral entity. Um, dala niya, nakasukbit literal sa likod niya yung mahabang magdamag, yung gabi. At laman ng mahabang magdamag na yun, ng dilim, kamatayan, mga trahedya. But at the same time, gusto kong sabihin na hindi siya puro sa kasamaan o hindi siya puro, hindi, hindi puro negatibong aspeto ang bit-bit niya. At siya ay site din ng pag-ikom ng, ali- ng alliances uh, para sa mas malakas, mas mabilis, at as mas, mas epektibong pagganti sa oppression. Kung lalapit kayo, makikita nyo na yung kaliwang sungay ng baka ay basag-basag. Gusto kong sabihin kasi na within the beast, within the mythical beast, within this entity, may clashing ng contradictions na nangyayari. Parang yung gabi na bitbit niya. So ayun, um, pagburo at at the same time paglaban siya. Yun yung sinisignify nung basically yung work. One way of approaching the project is to group the works into two, the journal fragments and the illustrated prophecies. The journal fragments respond to the time of Velasco and Matatillo and depict scenes from their travels. Through landscapes and still lifes, they try to visually construct the places they had visited and inhabited. There are also documentations of assorted encounters, confrontations with the newly organized Philippine Constabulary, tangent narratives, flora and fauna, and other curiosities. The larger drawings depict Mantatia's prophecies. They correspond to our time period, our current contradictions, and specific adversities. They tell the conditions of our ferment and the inevitable revolution. So this is called the Anturium Passion. Um, it also appears in one of uh, Mantatia's prophecies. Right. So, nakakita siya sa kagubatan ng um, Maynila at Laguna ng species ng Anthurium na fictional na hugis ng fascist, fascist ni Mussolini. So, bundle of sticks na nakapayikot sa palakol. Uh, at the same time, yung, uh, this particular shape ay inadopt din ng maraming militaristic organizations around the world. Kabilang na yung Philippine Constabulary. Right. So, Gusto kong i-thread yung link na yun. Yung pasismo at yung militarization. Tapos, um, kung tutukan din natin, makikita natin na may bangaw dun sa ibabaw ng uh, bulaklak. Gusto kong sabihin kasi na amoy nabubulok na laman ang pasismo. Uh, yung bulaklak. Alright, so this work is called Yung Ipamitinan. Ito yung destination ni Helasio at Mantapio. Um, view from away from the mountain at makikita nyo na may ilaw may San Telmo nag-iisa dun sa entrance ng kuweba um, it serves as a guide of sorts sa mga papasok sa kuweba at the same time para siyang signal na nag-aabang sa mga susunod pa kila Mantatio at kila Helasio How about this one? Alright, so um, itong kwebang pang itong yung ipamitinan, andito siya. This is Mount Pamitinan. Ito ay binakayan. Magkatapat sila. Kung maalala nyo sa baba, minensyon natin si yung pasyon Bernardo Carpio, si Bernardo Carpio. So may mito sa Montalban na pinaghihiwalay ni Bernardo Carpio yung nagdalawang nag-uumpugang bundok. At ito ngayon yung binakayan at pamitinan. So sabi-sabi, na makikita nyo pa yung uh, bakas ng talampakan ni Bernardo Carpio sa ilog sa gitna ng dalawang bundok. Yeah. So, um, zoom in lang basically itong yungid na to ng destination nila na Mount Pamitinan. Okay. So, the end, ending point na siya. Malapit na sila sa end point ng journey. So, Carla designed the exhibition in such a way na uh, the viewers will have to or is designed to end the they're viewing here at the smaller room. So, um, start here. Uh, at the top, Mount 
um, makiling na sa Laguna pa sila. Quanta Tio and Helasio saw a streak of light um, across the sky. Yun yung Halley's Comet. And it was an impetus of sorts for them to continue on their journey. Eh, kailangan nila magmadali. Right. So over here, we have um, a recording of that um, event. So and, uh, beside the text, we also have these illustrations of um, fire bullets. So ang tawag sa kanila ay listahan ng mani ningil. Uh, tinutukoy nila yung perpetual na pagpatay sa mga pesante, sa mga mahihirap, at ang kumapatay sa kanila ay state agents. Gusto ko rin i-point out na may agency dun sa title kung papansin nyo, listahan ng mani ningil. Ibig sabihin may mani ningil, may sisingilin. So may, may ganun siyang activity, right? So over here, um, a gahan scene, right? So to get very good, medyo, medyo mahaba siya, right? Um, during one of our meetings in Carmel, um, they asked or they gave me an assignment. Tinanong niya, mag-isip ka or mag-speculate ka on a situation where tapos na ang revolusyon, yung pagtanggol na ang revolusyon, ano ang kahitinat na, ano ang itsura natin. So ang iniisip ko, babalik tayo sa dating gawi, babalik tayo sa mga dating instincts, tendencies, pero, uh, mas mga mas maliwanag na ako, mas magaan na ako. Thus, yung finish yung, yung drawing, yung quality yung drawing, right? So, gusto ko yung point out na uh, na si Manta Tio ay nag-aagahan sa gitna ng dagat na tumigil ang alon. Which leads me to our final uh, work we did discuss ay ito. Um, kung maalala sa kanina, meron tayo mga inibong examples of magic realism. So, um, it continues here. Um, nabasag yung alon, nabasag yung dagat, tumibig yung alon, pumatag yung dagat. So, ayun yung pinakita ng trabaho dito. Um, essentially, I want to say that kung saan nababasag yung alon, doon din magbabasag yung panikala. Ibig sabihin, uh, wala nang inequality, wala nang Sira na ang hierarchies, nasagla ang hierarchies. At sa gitna kung saan nag-agahan sa mga tatiyo, kung saan nabasa ng tanikala, nandun ang tuloy na paglayan. A subset of the journal or the typewritten texts. These basically form an epistolary short story through diary entries. These accounts also function as an expository device of sorts in order to better situate and give context to the drawings. Following the chronology of the texts is also another way to read the project. Apart from charting the journey of the two characters, the texts also contain the recorded utterances of the prophecies. Um, sinituate ko siya sa labas, exposed sa elements, sa ulan, sa araw. Ang intent kasi is, uh, for the duration of the exhibition, unti-unti magde-disintegrate yung material. Kaya rin nakalagay or nakaguhit yung kamay sa yero. Kakalawangin siya habang tumatagal. Right. So, uh, kamay na bakal, pero at the same time, hindi siya closed fist, nakabukas siya. Kasi gusto namin maglagay ng aspeto ng imbitasyon ng paanyaya na nasa labas ang uh, ang direct action. Kung gusto natin mag-engage sa direct action, kailangan natin pumunta sa kali, kailangan natin lumabas. Yung kaisipan na yon galing sa isang interview ni Conchitina Cruz sa Fortnite Poetry Review. Sinabi niya doon na um, sinabi niya essentially na walang tula ang papalit sa mga katawan sa kali. So, may paghihikayat sa direct action at sinasabi niya na may kakulangan essentially ang aesthetic realm or ang pagkilos exclusively within the aesthetic realm. Kung talagang gusto natin gumawa ng, or kung gusto natin talagang baguhin ang mga dapat baguhin. So, um, 
the work is is um is an attempt at that. Gusto ko na ang huling makita ng viewers itong trabaho na to. Gusto ko na nasa labas sila. Gusto ko na yayain silang lumabas. Gusto ko na yayain silang kumilos sa labas. Physical direct engagement. Dito nagtatapos ang ating virtual walkthrough. Maraming salamat sa panonood. Maraming salamat at umabot kayo dito. Uh, bukas ang pagguro at pag-aal sa Natural Depictions and Illustrated Prophecies, sila siya 1910. Simula mamayang alas 6 ng gabi hanggang December 12. Tumatanggap ang Vargas Museum ng physical viewing appointments. Mag-email lang sa kanila. Or kung drop ako kayo, message nyo lang ako. Uh, ayun, maraming salamat.